Hi guys, so one of the subscribers, Dan, cheers for watching mate and commenting, wanted me to do a rig rundown on my little weapon of choice, so it's a um, 460 Renegade center console, it's only two years old, I'm running the 75 horsepower four stroke Mercury, plenty of power, if anything it's probably too big a motor to be honest, it's too heavy. If I had my time again, I'd probably go like the lightweight Yamaha. <laughs> Funny story, when I picked this boat up, it actually already had the lightweight Yamaha on it, but I opted to go bigger. Bigger is better. <laughs> anyway, um, the only issue with the motor being the weight that it is, obviously it makes the back end of the boat pretty heavy, so it can labour a bit when you're trying to, trying to jump out of the hole. But otherwise, plenty of performance, plenty of power. Thing does nearly 40 knots flat stick, so I mean, that's more than enough speed for a boat of this size. In addition, obviously, to the main motor, we got the, the bow mount electric. It's a 55 pound thrust motor. It holds me on the spot pretty much regardless of the wind. Really, the biggest issue is wave action. Once you get big waves, it just um, lifts out of the water and cavitates. That's a problem. I've had some issues with breaking the motor head off. This one's actually cracked in there as well, you can see in here. So I've just put a bit of pool noodle there just to support it for the time being. I'm not sure what's breaking it, whether or not it's the wave action just smashing onto that steel or what it is, but it's the second cowling or head that I've broken now. In terms of, I guess, additional bolt-ons, canopy, it's a Dolphin Pro. It's a pretty good canopy, nice and sturdy, gives you something to hold on to, a bit of shade. Also got my rod holders on the inside there, which is pretty handy. I'm running the Simrad sounder, it's a Go 9. It's pretty good resolution. And obviously the um, Mercury Smartcraft gauge, that's pretty handy too. Tells you everything you need to know about the motor. Battery set up down the bottom here, only running a single with the isolator. That second isolator was for the original battery I was using for the electric motor. I opted to swap out the standard AGM for two lithiums. Probably the best modification I made to be honest because now I've got twice the power but it's usable. So from 100 amp hour to 200 amp hour, 200 amp hour it's effectively nearly four times the usable energy so never run shy of battery power. Little pump over the other side there is actually the deck wash. Pockets are kind of separate up, so that side's got my hoses and my normal sort of drift fishing tackle, well, actually surface fishing tackle, just hooks and bits and pieces, crab and cray gauge. On the opposite side is where I keep all my lures, my deep sea jigs and trolling lures. This thing's awesome, it's a dispenser for your leaders. Just dispense it out and trim off as much as you need. Fire extinguisher and EPIRB sits under the helm. This is the foot switch for the uh, electric motor. So basically you stick that on the floor, put it around wherever you want to to make it comfortable and stand on it when you want to winch it up. It's pretty good to use if you're on your own. And then of course, there's the cray pot tipper and winch. I got the winch put here in front of the helm because it effectively doubles up as a cray pot winch and an anchor winch. So I can pull my cray pots. The uh, tipper comes out this side here. You guys have seen it in my video before. So effectively, you pull the pot up this side, comes through the tipper and across here onto the winch. And then you winch it up. And as I said, it doubles up as also as an anchor winch if you need to. I don't use the anchor much, don't need to. That electric motor does pretty much everything I need it to do. Up the front here is just your basic storage, life jackets and bits and pieces. There's a little pedestal seat in there. I don't use seats. I like to have as much deck space as possible. Sit on the gunnels. The lithium batteries. This cable is just a charge cable. cup holders here, these can be moved anywhere. 
it's a good little setup. Handles rough water pretty well. It's pretty beamy. Yeah, you know, I've fished four guys on here. You're starting to get a bit too much with four, but two is very comfortable. Three's, you know, doable. Four is probably the, the upper limits. It is a center console, so obviously it's a pretty wet boat. <laughs> Standing up here, that's what these bits of plastic are for, so I've made them. I just had some some vinyl, basically it was a tablecloth, an old style protective tablecloth laying around. I just trimmed it up because I couldn't find the appropriate clears for the time being, so they actually work quite well. They do annoy me though as I'm driving along, this thing flaps in my face. Once I get an opportunity, I'll buy the proper ones. They actually do make wings for these dolphin T-tops, but they've sold out. So as soon as I can get a set, I will. This bait board actually is designed to mate up with the holes on the side. So I can have it either at the back or on the side if I want to drift fish with a couple of people. Down the bottom here at the back, I keep my burly cages and the larger net. I'd like to say I need the larger net most of the time, but it's just not true. <laughs> the little one, little one does most of the work. To be fair, even the dewy and stuff that I caught this morning, which you guys will see in another video, that um, most of the dewies and everything else fit in that net fine. It's good for squid and everything else too, because the hooks don't really get stuck in that net. I find in this type of mesh, even though it's the, you know, amalgamated stuff or sort of sealed off with that rubber your hooks still get caught in them in particular if you're unlucky enough to get it through this edging here it's a real pain in the ass to try and get it out and really that's about it i mean it's, it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward the old kiss principle keep it simple stupid but functional the layout works there's plenty of places to hang stuff there's plenty of places to store stuff the rods all stash away on the side here it's a good little rig. In terms of the trailer, we're looking at a standard Quintrex aluminium trailer, but to fit it in my garage, I've had to modify it with one of these knuckles. So basically this drawbar here, it swings away to the side and it makes the, the anchor here in line with the front of the trailer so that I can drop my roller door in the garage. Otherwise, you've just got nowhere to store it. It's a good little boat. I take it out offshore, use it for crabbing, crayfishing. You guys have seen all that. Haven't seen a crabbing yet. I actually haven't been crabbing anywhere near as much as I'd like to this season. So, got to get out and do a couple of trips. Hopefully soon. Just running out of time. Work commitments and other family commitments. But definitely want to get out and do a few more crabbing episodes for you guys. Well, for you guys, that's probably not true. I want to do it for me. <laughs> I want to, I'm missing a feed of crabs. What I'd like to do is catch a feed of crabs and do maybe a catch and cook on the crab pasta for you guys. That's probably one of my, my favorite dishes. And that's really it, guys. There's not much to it. Um, I've had it for probably two years. I've put nearly 300 hours on the clock on this thing. So I use it a lot. I don't live far from the marina. So as, as many mornings as I can before I go to work, I try to head out and use it. Otherwise, what's the point of having it sit in the garage? So this canopy also folds down. I've got the little um, screw pins on there. They unscrew those things and drop the canopy forward so that I can get it in the garage. I'll show you guys that when I'm about to pack it away. It's pretty handy. So in terms of how I pack it all down. Out. And screw these screws.
charge cable. I like to leave those open just so I can air out. It doesn't need to be, just get the moisture trapped in there and start stinking after a while. I'll just take this forward. And that's it. Pretty simple. Low profile. Packs away pretty good. And it just goes straight under the door, straight in the garage. So now that I packed the boat away, you can see what I mean. Second jockey wheel is actually for resting the drawbar on once I take the weight off the part that folds away. So it's a bit of rigmarole, but you gotta do what you gotta do to fit it in. The pins come out, the drawbar breaks away. That's what that chain's for as well. When I go on long trips, I sort of cross chain that part of the trailer to that that makes sense so if it does break away it's still connected to the car and then that gives me just enough clearance to get it inside the door yeah they're a good idea it does what i need to do don't have a lot of confidence in it though if I'm being honest, I go to take it on long drives. I'm always nervous that this thing's gonna break. It's just the cast fitting and you know, is it gonna shear a bolt or a pin or always worried about it. Come up with some better mechanism. A sliding drawbar would make sense, something that slides in and out that you can push a pin in and just draw just draw it back in, but I've still got the toe tongue there that's gonna hang out. So I don't think it'll give me enough clearance. I have seen solid, solid um, gal, basically made out of a gal plate, similar to this, but a lot thicker versions of this where it's all welded up. I'd probably trust something like that a bit more than this. Anyway, does the job for now. So yeah, guys, that's that's really it. That's my little my little weapon of choice. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate the feedback and the comments you guys leave me. And if there's anything else you guys want to see, let me know. Oh, just quickly, that's that charge cable I was talking about earlier for my electric. Oops. So I literally have a charger here that I plug into it. A bit hard to do with one hand. It has a shunt on there, so that tells me exactly how many hours, or amp hours rather, I've drawn once I turn it on. Charges at nearly 20 amps. And then once it's fully charged, it'll tell me how many amp hours it took to, uh, to fill it, which is kind of cool. It's like running a fuel gauge for your, I know it's upside down, but unfortunately kind of like running a fuel gauge for um, for a battery so once it's full it tells me exactly how many amp hours it's put in how many watts it's put in gives me a good indication of whether or not I need more power so anyway, as I was saying guys thanks for thanks for watching like and subscribe if there's anything else you want to see or if you have any questions around the boat in particular let me know I'm happy to answer them and uh I'll hopefully see you out in the water.